some of the people were saying, well, this, these people didn't go help us, so forget them. We'll give them their kids and wives back and send them away. Then said David, You shall not do so, my brethren, with that which the Lord hath given us, who hath preserved us, and delivered the company that came against us into our hand. They said, It's not you guys, it was the Lord. All right. All right. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. You just think it was you, but it's not you, it was the Lord. Amen. Verse 24, For who will hearken unto you in this matter? But as his part is that goeth down to the battle, so shall his part be that tarrieth by the stuff. They shall part alike. So he said to him, We're going to share with these people the same as if they were down there. And it was so from that day forward that he made it a statute and an ordinance for Israel unto this day. And when David came to Ziklag, he sent of the spoil unto the elders of Judah, even to his friends, saying, Behold, a present for you of the spoil of the enemies of the Lord. Do you see how he had so much he was able to give to those who didn't go, and he came back and he even gave to the elders and said, Oh, here's a present. We've got lots of spoil here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was nothing lacking. He recovered all. Praise the Lord. But it would have been a different story if David had a, let that discouragement set in. And then he had fainted or quit or allowed them to stone him. Uh, it would have been a whole different story here in the Bible. Discouragement comes from a lack of courage. It's discourage. That's right. Okay. If I'm discouraged, then I am basically uh, down, uh, fearful, unbelieving. According to, to the Word of God. Now, don't get upset with me and go get under condemnation if you've had a battle of discouragement. We do face those things from time to time, but we just need to learn to deal with them. Right, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Right. Let's look a little bit closer at discouragement. Look in Numbers 21. Numbers 21 and verse uh, 4. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. We see from this that the children of Israel were discouraged because of their circumstances. Because of what they found themselves in. What they were seeing in the natural. The primary way discouragement enters your life is by your physical circumstances. What you're seeing, what you're facing, what you're dealing with. And when you allow those um, indicators to be stronger than the Word of God in your life, when you believe them more than you believe the Word of God, discouragement sets in. Mm -hmm. Now remember David had his city burned, his wives taken away, and the kids, everything gone. Mm -hmm. It was a great opportunity to be discouraged. Mm -hmm. Then on top of that, his men spake of stoning him. Mm -hmm. It was a wonderful opportunity to be discouraged. But if you become discouraged, you're yielding into the enemy's playing field. Mm -hmm. And he's going to sift you like wheat. Mm -hmm. He's going to eat your lunch. Whatever term you want to call it. <laughs> now you may feel like you have every right to be discouraged. And feel sorry for yourself. And have a mully grub. <laughs> That's my own term. That's whenever your nose digs a trench in the dirt about a mile deep because you feel so bad you can't lift your head up. <laughs> Maybe you've never been that way, but I've faced it a few times. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's Alabama song right here. So anyway, discouragement sets in 
again if you allow it to, and it will um, take you further than you wanted to go. Yeah. Yes, anyway. So David encouraged himself in the Lord, encouraged himself in the Lord, encouraged himself in the Lord. Yeah. Is God. In other words, he had to get his focus off of what circumstances were screaming at him. And get it back on God. Now we have to do that too. You see, I don't physically see God standing here. Hallelujah. But I don't see the wind either. That doesn't mean it's not there. I see the effects of it. God, I see the effects of the wind. So there is a realm outside of what I'm seeing. And the Bible says that it is the eternal realm. It's what lasts forever. What you're seeing is temporary. But you can easily get caught up in the, in the flow of the flood of the tide going downstream of discouragement. When your circumstances try to turn on you like that. Oh, yeah. And so you have to get with God and get refocused and quit letting physical, temporary things be Lord of your life. Mm -hmm. And get back to the Word of God. Yeah. Jesus is our Lord. Yeah. Look at Numbers 32. While we're in Numbers Glory be to God. Glory, glory. Glory. Numbers 32, beginning with verse 6. Numbers 32, 6. Mm -hmm. And Moses said unto the children of Gad, mm -hmm. and to the children of Reuben, Shall your brethren go to war, and shall you sit here? Mm -hmm. That's because they were wanting to stop before they got into the promised land. They liked where they were. Mm -hmm. And wherefore discourage ye the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which the Lord had given them. Mm -hmm. How are they discouraging them? Well, they were saying, we like it here. It's fine here. It's nice here. Why not just stay here? Yeah. You ever heard those things? <laughs> God has told you to do something. Yeah, but I'm pretty comfortable here, Lord. <laughs> pretty nice here. Why would I want to do any change? Change brings different things, things I don't know about. <laughs> That's what was happening here. Then the people were hearing what they were saying and they were becoming discouraged because of what they heard. The others said. So we see here that discouragement comes from circumstances.